I'm standing on top of Federal Hill overlooking Baltimore's Inner Harbor. Since the early 1980s, the Inner Harbor has been one of the nation's top tourist attractions. But before redevelopment took place, the Inner Harbor served an entirely different purpose. Let's go back in time when Baltimore was queen of the bay. With construction of Baltimore's first steamboat in 1813, the city strengthened its influence upon the region. For the first time, vessels out of Baltimore could crisscross the bay on a regular schedule. Steamboats were to become a way of life for the next 150 years. Baltimore's steamboat historian, H. Graham Wood, explains. I think steamboating on the bay can be broken down into four categories. First, the route to Norfolk, connections to the south. Secondly, the route to Philadelphia, connections to the north. Thirdly, the many excursion lines, one-day trips to the various resorts around the bay. And lastly, and to me the most romantic, the many, many river steamers that went to up all the rivers of the bay, making landings back and forth up to the head of navigation. Steamboat service between Baltimore and Norfolk began in 1817. The Baltimore Steam Packet Company, affectionately known as the Old Bay Line, commenced operations in 1840. It provided year-round overnight freight and passenger service between the two cities until 1962. Large steamboats such as the City of Richmond and the City of Norfolk could accommodate up to 400 passengers in comfort and style. One-way passage averaged from six to nine dollars, depending upon your choice of sleeping accommodations. Passengers would relax and socialize on deck, catching the cool bay breeze while waiting the most welcome of calls. Hold for dinner. Dinner's now being served. Hold for dinner. Hold for dinner. Dining room forward. Dinner's now being served. The meals were unbelievable. For a dollar, you could get a, a meal for I don't know, you couldn't duplicate anywhere now for $20 somewhere. And do you know that they had the nerve to raise it to a dollar and a quarter some years after? <laughs> Beginning in 1813, the Baltimore-Philadelphia steamboats were the first to operate on the Chesapeake Bay. A trip between the two cities included an overland passage by stagecoach. Later on, a rail line and the opening of the C&D Canal made for a less arduous journey. Steamboat operations between the two cities continued until 1940. For hundreds of thousands of Baltimoreans, excursion steamers provided a brief respite from the sweltering heat of summer. Day-long outings to beaches on Maryland's eastern shore were the highlight of many families' social calendar. The sidewheeler Louise carried an average of 300,000 passengers per season across the bay to Tallchester Beach. Several generations of Baltimoreans can fondly recall the Louise's prominent role in the courtships of their mothers and fathers as the boat steamed across the bay on moonlight excursions. On the western side of the bay, the Dreamland carried as many as 2,000 people per trip from Baltimore to Chesapeake Beach. Railroad service on Kent Island connected steamboat passengers to the distant Atlantic Ocean resorts of Rehoboth Beach and Ocean City. Easy access to the Atlantic beaches by family car would ultimately become the demise of every Chesapeake Bay resort. River steamers were slower and smaller than the excursion boats and bay steamers, but their itineraries were certainly more interesting. There were over 100 landings on the eastern shore of the bay and nearly 150 on the western shore of the bay. Baltimore was a lifeline of these communities. There was no, no place else they could go except by steamboat to Baltimore. For decades, steamboats and smaller sailing vessels were the Bay's only practical means of transportation. Isolated rural communities depended upon their nearest river landing for machinery, supplies, and store-bought goods from Baltimore. In return, they shipped produce, tobacco, grain, livestock, and seafood to sell back in the city. Rural residents would travel to the city by river steamer for doctor's appointments, shopping, or for business reasons. For them, Baltimore was queen of the bay. 
The arrival of the steamboat from Baltimore to isolated river landings became a real social event and a connection to the outside world. The peak of steamboat operations came around 1910. H. Graham Wood estimates over 200,000 trips were taken by Chesapeake Bay steamboats between 1880 and 1935. Most of us never experienced the romantic and slower paced life of the steamboat era. Mr. Wood is one of the fortunate few. I wish that all of you could have been around to watch the late afternoon parade of Snow White steamboats leaving Baltimore, caught in the slanting rays of the setting sun, that have stood on the freight deck of the steamer, and peered into the engine room, and heard the ka-ch, of the steam escaping from the machinery as the walking beam rocked back and forth high above, or could have lain in your stateroom berth throughout the night, and heard the cries of the cattle, the sheep and the pigs one deck below, or the slap of a paddle wheel on the water, or a bellboy fading astern, or the steamer blowing for the next landing, or could have waited on a country wharf for what seemed like hours before sighting the smoke and then the stack of the steamer coming around the next bend. If you could have seen all these things, you never would have forgotten the spell of it all. <laughs> 